Okay, so now I'm going to talk about volumes. Again, all of these formulas are given in your formula booklet, so you don't have to memorize them. Pyramids are uh, shapes that have some sort of base, and then from the vertices of that base, we have lines that come up to a center point. So we could have rectangular-based pyramids, triangular-based pyramids, or square-based pyramids. So I'm going to draw a rectangular-shaped pyramid, or try to anyhow. All right, if it looks something like this, then straight up from this would be our point. We would call that the apex, or the vertex of the pyramid. Let's try and make that straight. Okay, we connect down. All right, so there's our pyramid sort of looking shape. And then straight down from the center would be my height. If I want to find the volume of a pyramid, first I find the area of the base. So if it's a rectangle, I would take the length times the width. So for this pyramid, I would have one-third of my base times my height. So this is the area of the base. That's what my A is there. It's the area of the base, and we're going to multiply it by the height. And that's for a pyramid. Cuboid, length, width, height. Cuboid looks like a cube in that we have all straight sides. And there's six faces on it. But in a cube, all my sides would be the same length. In a cuboid, we don't necessarily have the sides as the same length. So we could have length, width, and which one we call length and width doesn't really matter. Normally, the one that stands up we call the height, but eh, it doesn't matter so much. Volume of a cylinder. Well, this is the same, similar as a pyramid. This is the area of the base because in a cylinder, my base is a circle. So area of the base times the height. So here's my height and there's my radius. Sphere, 4 thirds pi r cubed. So maybe that one we make solid around the back. And again, my radius can be drawn from the center out to any point. Cone, again, is one third. Basically, these shapes that don't remain consistent all the way up, I'm going to have a third in always. So volume of a cone. Now I've got, this time for the cone, I need the vertical height, not the slant height. So there's my height. Oops, that could be a solid line there. And here's my height, and here's my radius. So if you have the slant height, remember we needed the slant height to find the surface area. If I have the slant height, I use Pythagorean theorem to find my vertical height. Okay, so we're using the vertical height here. And now for a prism. A prism is any shape that I take and stretch out. So I could, for example, have a triangular prism. So if I take this triangle and then stretch it back, I would end up with something like this. Now in this case, here is my cross section. It's like my base. I've just drawn it to be laying on its side. So in this case, my height is going to be this distance here. That's going to be my height. And here is my base. So I would find the area of this cross section. So in this case, the volume would be the area of the triangle times the height. So you always have to figure out what kind of prism do you have? Is it triangular? In which case, even though I was going to find the area of this triangle, I might call this the height. This is the height of the prism. So this is the height of the prism. We might also have a height of the triangle. But that's going to be different than the height that I'm thinking about for this formula. So that would be the height of the triangle. 
So area of the base, and that's whatever has been stretched out, times the height, and the height might be lying on its side for a prism.